Hey guys, welcome back, it's Professor Hank, and in this video I'm going to show you how to use dynamic memory allocation in your C++ programs. We'll talk about what it is, we'll talk about the two keywords that you need in order to implement or to utilize dynamic memory in your programs, and finally we'll look at some examples of using dynamic memory allocation in some simple programs. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. So What's dynamic memory allocation? Why do you need it? What's what's going on? Okay, so dynamic memory allocation is a type of memory that you can use or a type of memory that you allocate after your program begins running. So in your previous programs, whenever you were creating variables in your program, int x, double d, care c, that sort of thing, um, what you were doing is you were creating static allocated memory or memory that was set aside for your program at compile time so if you knew ahead of time how big of an array that you needed if you knew that your program was always going to need an array of five elements or that you were only ever going to need two integer variables for the entire execution of your program say then you could just set that aside you use static memory allocation to create those variables create that array and that's all the memory that you're going to get but what if you didn't know ahead of time what if you didn't know, what if you needed to be able to allocate that array after the program started running? What if you wanted to ask the user how big of an array they wanted, for example? Well, then one option to deal with this, an option to deal with this is by using dynamic memory allocation. Okay, so if you have memory that you need to set aside or that you need to create after the program starts running, you need dynamic memory allocation. All right, so to use dynamic memory allocation, then we have two keywords that we need to use and that is new and delete okay so keep in mind that for every time an expression with new executes you need to have an equivalent delete okay so otherwise you end up with memory leaks okay so um you only get so much memory that gets allocated to your program and every single time you do new you're getting some additional memory that's being taken up that's being utilized or being assigned uh, within your program and if you don't delete all of that eventually you can run out of memory that's been assigned to your program so for every new you have to have a delete okay so let's take a look at uh, an example of how you do this okay so we're going to use the keywords in c plus plus we use new and we used delete new and delete all right so let us say that I wanted to dynamically allocate an integer variable. Okay, now to do this, you actually need, or you're actually gonna end up with two variables, okay? Because this new operator right here, when you say uh, new int, right? This expression right here is going to ask the operating system, give me four bytes that I can use after the program has started executing during runtime. Now what the new operator returns is a memory address. Okay, so if it returns a memory address, then in order to access the new integer variable, we have to store that memory address somewhere. Now, isn't it fortunate that we have these things called pointers that we learned about in a new or previous video? Right, so when I have a statement that looks like this, what I've done is, is with this expression at runtime, I've created a new integer variable, okay? Now it's not named like statically allocated variables, right? Because we have to use this new, this, this creates it in memory, but we can't access it via a name, okay? How we're gonna access it is through this pointer, this pointer that I called n, because the memory address for that integer gets returned by the new operator and we store it in the n variable. Now, an interesting thing to note here is that you end up with two variables with this one statement. You have a statically allocated variable, right, named n, it's a pointer, and that variable, the memory for that variable was set aside at compile time, right, before the program even executed, before you even ran it, you knew that you were gonna have these bytes set aside for this pointer. Now, after the program starts running, the new int executes okay when the new int executes then at runtime an additional four bytes gets allocated and the memory address for it gets 
returned by new and stored in n. So in this case, what we can say is that n was statically allocated, and that is at compile time. And then we have our second variable, which is unnamed. Unnamed variable, int variable, was dynamically allocated uh, at runtime as the program's running. Okay, so um, this actually creates or this results in two variables. All right, one holds the memory address of an integer uh, variable, and the integer variable holds an integer. So remember, I said that for every new you have to have delete in order to avoid memory leaks. So what we do is we use the delete statement, the delete keyword, we just say delete n, right? So this new executes and then this delete n executes, this delete executes. So it matches the new memory that was given to our program at runtime was then released or given back at runtime with the delete. So how do we manipulate this then? Okay, well, this is an integer variable and we have to go to the memory location okay where that integer is how do we get there via its memory address well where the memory address come from it came from the new operator so then where did we store that memory address we stored it in the pointer the pointer was statically allocated this integer variable was dynamically allocated so we have to access that new uh, integer variable via a memory address, via a pointer. So we can do something like this. We could say star n equals eight. Okay, so what did this do? We dereferenced the memory address in n. Okay, so we dereferenced it using the dereference operator, and that allows us to do what? Go to the memory location whose address is in n. Well, whose address is in n? Our new integer variables address is in n. So what we're saying is, is go to the memory location whose address is an N and put eight there. Okay. So I can do that. Uh, I can create another, um, another pointer, say, uh, int star O. All right. So again, this will be statically allocated at compile time. And then I will assign to it another integer. Okay, so this is going to create a total of four variables as my program's running. The n and the o will get created at compile time. And then this is going to get created at runtime. And this is going to get created at runtime. So at that point in time, I'm going to have, or after line 18 executes, I'm going to have four variables of memory, two pointers, two integers. Now let's not forget that we have to delete all of our dynamically allocated memory. So we're going to do that. Okay, so when I say delete n, what I'm actually saying is what this how you can actually read this is that what we're doing is we're saying free the memory, give the memory back of the variable whose address is in n. Okay, give the memory back of the variable whose address is in o. Okay, because at this point, um, you know, once we've allocated our memory here and here, right, n is pointing to this new integer variable this dynamically allocated integer variable. O is pointing to this dynamically allocated integer variable. So we're going to use those pointers to delete, to free the memory that they are pointing at. All right, so now I can also go here and assign to the memory location whose address is in O, I don't know, say two, okay? And then here, what I'll do is I will create in another variable and I'll assign to it the sum of the two integers that I created. Okay, how am I doing that? I'm doing that by accessing the integer being pointed to by n and accessing the integer being pointed to by pointer o. I'm going to the memory location whose address is in n and whose address is in o. I'm retrieving the eight, I'm retrieving the two, I'm adding them together, and then that sum is getting put into sum. So once statement 22 executes, uh, or line 22 executes, I actually have how many variables? I've got one for pointer n, two for pointer o. I've got this unnamed dynamically allocated integer variable 
whose address is assigned to n. I've got this unnamed dynamically allocated integer variable whose address is assigned to o. And then I've got this statically allocated sum variable. Okay, so I can then say something like this. I could say C out the sum of, and then I'll retrieve the eight uh, through the pointer n. Okay, pointer n, remember, points to that integer variable. And then I'll say the sum of that, and, and then I'll retrieve the two, which is stored in, right, two is stored in this int variable that was dynamically allocated. Okay, and eight gets stored into the uh, this guy right here, right? So that results in two variables, but we also are going to end up with eight in the int variable. Okay, so we'll grab those two values out and then put those on the screen and then um, I'll uh, do some. Okay, so take a look at that statement. I mean, there's a lot going on here, right? We're dereferencing n to get to the 8, which is in this integer variable. We're dereferencing o to get to the 2, which is in this integer variable. And then we're just finding the contents of sum. Okay, and then once we're done with that, we're done with the variable n, or excuse me, the variable whose address is in n. We're done with the variable whose address is in o. So we're deleting those variables that n and o are pointing at. We're not deleting n or o. n is statically allocated. o is statically allocated. This is an integer pointer. This is an integer pointer. We're not deleting those. We're not freeing the memory that those are being used to, and you, that those are using, because um, those are statically allocated. When the program terminates, you know they're gone. Okay, so we don't have to worry about that. Um, we do have to make sure that we manually delete the dynamically allocated stuff. Okay, so let's go ahead and run this. And we will check our output, right? So we can see that the sum of eight and two is 10. Okay, so let's look at another example here. And uh, for this example, what we'll do is we will um, dynamically allocate an array. Okay, so we'll dynamically allocate an array dynamically allocate an array of integers. Array of integers. Okay, it's impossible to do dynamic memory allocation without pointers. Okay, so it's important that you know how to create pointers, assign um, memory addresses to them and so on. But um, here's what we'll do. We'll say, um, enter the size of an array. Okay, so We'll let the user tell us how big of an array that they want. Okay, so we'll have a prompt and then we'll have our size variable, which is statically allocated. Statically allocated. And then we'll have um, our pointer because you have to have that. So we'll call this R or maybe we'll call it a pointer for array pointer. Okay, and this is also statically allocated okay and then what we'll do is is we'll now create our array so what's the syntax for that create an array using um, dynamic memory allocation so what do we do we use that new keyword again okay so this is going to be an array of integers so it's an array of integers so let's go ahead and specify that it's an array because right now, if we, all we did was say new int, we'd be creating one integer variable, but that's not what we're doing. We're creating an array, an array that's sized by the user. Okay, so at runtime, the user is going to tell us how big of an array to make. And at runtime, we're going to create the array using the size that they gave us. Okay, and that's going to create an array of size times four bytes, and we'll put the memory address of it into this pointer. And once we've done that, we can um, use that array just like we always have used any other type of array. So let us say that we wanted to um, let the user populate the array. Okay, so now we can do something like this. We could say, oh, well, four int i equals uh, zero. 
I listen size, I plus plus, um, see out, uh, enter a number, number four elements, and then we'll say, um, you know, just element I. Okay. And then we'll read it in. And notice here, I'm using standard old array notation. Okay. Uh, all right. So, once we've done that, then we'll go ahead and we'll print out the contents of the array. Now, show the array to the user. So, for int i equals zero, i less than size, i plus plus. So, see out a pointer i. Okay, we'll put a little space in between each of the um, numbers and each of the elements, and then I'll do a New line character here now we can use this array notation here or we can also use the pointer notation so we can do something like this a pointer plus i okay those are basically the same thing all right so let us then test it oh i forgot to do my uh let's close this i forgot to do my delete don't do that <laughs> right so for every new you have to have a delete now what we have to do to delete an entire array is we have to have square brackets. Okay. Square brackets is how you tell C++ that, no, I'm not just going to be deleting one thing. I'm not just deleting, you know, um, four bytes. Okay. Four bytes for an integer, right? This is an integer array. So there's size integers right next to each other in memory, right? So we have to be able to say C++, delete all of those. Don't just delete one integer delete the entire array of integers okay so that will avoid our memory leak okay so let's go ahead and try it so enter the size of right four enter the a number for element zero we'll do three for element one we'll do one for element two we'll do six for element three we'll do uh, eight okay so then you can see there's the content of the array so that's the basics of dynamic memory allocation now this has broad application in all kinds of different okay so that's going to bring this video to a close if you're a student of mine you have questions about any of the topics that were covered in this video feel free to drop me an email stop by my office hours or hit me up on zoom online for the rest of you if you thought the video was useful please consider giving a thumbs up if you thought the video sucked you got the thumbs down button as well consider supporting the channel in various ways you can subscribe you can join as a member with additional perks for as little as 99 cents leave a comment whatever but most of all thanks for watching and we'll see you next time